Ernest from Zambia. Thank you for this opportunity to ask my question. I had uh, uh, the man of God, Prophet T.D. Joshua. He once said that uh, the Word of God has been a living and growing force in the ministry of the synagogue church of all nations. Now, my question is, how, how does the Word of God become living and active uh, in a person's life? Or perhaps, let me, let, let me make it uh, personal. How, does, how, how, how can the Word of God become living and active in my life and through my life? Thank you. How can the Word of God become living and active in your life? Am I right? Thank you. I'm going straight to answer the question. And I remember when I met Prophet Jesus the first time in 2002, and there was a meeting, he said, we are not here for the word of God, but for the right application of the word of God. And he said, the word of God must be alive. How can the word of God be alive? The word must be spiritual. Then how can the word be spiritual? The word becomes spiritual when we obey it, he said. Mm. Then I began to think, to meditate on what he was saying. I meditated, I meditated. It took me time, time, time to study what he said. Because there are parables. He said, the problem we have is to allow the word of God in our heart. And that's the ground. And that's where the word becomes effective, become a tool. No one can apply the word of God with life without the Holy Spirit. Okay, this Bible contains promises. We all agree, huh? Eh? That's the written word. The promises of God are recorded in this Holy Bible. But this promise is a seed. Just like a seed. And we all know that a seed is lifeless until it dies. That's what Jesus said. The word of God is a seed that comes into our heart and causes faith to grow. I mean that seed, there's life inside that word. If you plant a seed in the ground, that seed will first die. John chapter 12, verse 24. If the seed dies, it, it changes. Most it's... assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. That's what Jesus said. The word of God we have, the letter, when it is planted in my brain, in my, in my thinking, it is lifeless because the right ground for the word is my heart, my spirit. And one day he told me that when the word of God enters your heart, it translates to spirit. How can the word become spirit? That's the question. How can the letter of the word, which is lifeless, all of a sudden become life? Okay, an example. Two people can say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. One can say, nothing happened. A person will say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And the person can heal. The same word. The same name, Jesus. But the result is different. Why? Because one has life. One does not have life. Now, let's go to the John chapter 6. From verse 63. It is the spirit who gives life. Mm -hmm. The flesh profits nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Listen to Jesus. It is what? It is the spirit who gives life. Which spirit? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a giver of all life. There's difference between words of the mouth of a man and words that come from God. Every word of God is spirit and life means it's not an ordinary word. When you speak it, it has life, mean solution. When God say, let there be light, light came. Let there be a firmament, and it was so. God will speak, and it comes to pass, because those words were not ordinary words, words spoken from the mouth of God, from the Holy Spirit. 
holy words affected with life. Now the question, how can I speak the word of life? For the word to become life, first, it must enter your heart. How can the word bypass my brain and enter my heart? That's the process. That's what we call the process of believing. <laughs> I can read the Bible by the letter and not understand what I'm reading. Because there is a spiritual understanding in the Bible. Natural understanding and spiritual understanding. Matthew chapter 13 verse 19. Just go there. Matthew chapter 13 verse 19. And let's listen to the words of Jesus again. When Jesus said, my words are spirit and life in John 6, 63. Who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life. And the people abandoned him and left him. Because they could not understand the word. Huh? When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and mm -hmm. does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. <laughs> this is he who receives seed by the wayside. Mean? By the wayside, the, the, the seed fell in your brain instead of your heart. Understanding comes into the spirit, in the heart of a man. So it means, if I read the Bible, I must carry the spirit of understanding with me. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of understanding. When he comes, he will open our heart to what is promised to us in Christ Jesus in the Bible. Once the Bible says there is healing in the word of God. The Holy Ghost guides me into an understanding of the word. The first work of the Holy Ghost in our life is to bring understanding. Once you understand what the Bible means, then the Holy Ghost, next thing, conviction will come. Belief will come that it is true. Now, that's where life will come from. When you believe, when you know the truth, and you believe the truth, faith comes. And now when you begin to speak it with the help of the Holy Ghost, that's where he comes. At that moment, he comes and gives you utterances, effective his life. When you obey it, life comes. So I'm going to, we don't have a, a lecture, a teaching on it, because it's just too deep to Yeah, this, this is very interesting. Prophet TV Joshua calls it the conversion room. The conversion room. He said, when the word enters your spirit, your heart, it translates to spirit. How? When revelation, at the point of revelation. Means, I can say, Jesus is Lord. I am the one reading it. But one day, in my heart, I hear, Jesus is Lord. That word comes from the Holy Spirit. Then when the word enters my heart at the point of revelation, understanding comes, it becomes spirit. Because my spirit will hear that word and act on that word. It's no longer my brain, it's my heart. So, when the word enters your heart, that's when it becomes spirit. That's when your spirit will hear it and act on it. And the Holy Ghost will come and affect it with life. You become the sword of the spirit. So, means you have to meditate in the word of God. When you meditate in the word of God, something going to happen. Revelation will come. Paul knew the Old Testament by heart, but he never understood until revelation came. Mm. And he said this gospel in Galatians chapter 1 verse 12, I received by revelation from God. What is revelation? The realization of something not previously known. When the Holy Ghost comes, you open your heart to the divine meaning of the scriptures. And that's what I want to say. When you have the divine meaning of the scriptures, you hear the word coming from your spirit, from your heart, the word in your heart, and you speak it out, Holy Ghost will affect it with life. And that's when you apply the word rightfully. Okay, for example, many confess the word of God. The Bible says, by stripe I'm healed. I say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Nothing will happen. I'm claiming. It's just mere claim. But if you hear from your spirit, from the Holy Spirit, the instruction to pray for somebody from your heart and you act on it, Holy Ghost will come and affect his life. Means when now you have your conviction and you confess the word out, that's when the Holy Ghost will come. The power of life. So when you speak God's word over a situation, you release your belief, your faith, and God's power comes onto the scene. Holy Ghost comes with affected with life. This means there are two things we need to know. Inspiration and expression. Inspiration 
is when revelation comes to your heart. Conviction come and you obey. Expression come, Holy Ghost will affect your life at the point of expression, real movement. That's where Holy Ghost come. Give life to your word. When they say, in the name of Jesus, be healed, the person got healed. When Peter and John met the man at the beautiful gate, they looked at the man, instruction came from the Holy Ghost. That's why the prophet called it the corresponding power. Means at each step, each prayer, intimation, suggestion, inspiration comes from the Holy Spirit. And when you obey, God's power comes onto the scene to perform the word. Miracle takes place. Life manifested. People get healed. People get saved. So what you need for the word to become alive is to engage your heart. The word worked effectively in the midst of our spirit in our heart. So our duty now is not just to read this Bible, it's to meditate, asking the Holy Ghost to give you understanding of it. What's the meaning of this? How can I apply this in my life? We can never apply the written word without being filled with the Holy Spirit, and that is it. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, it will fill you with life, and when you speak, it affects the word with life. Words becomes God's word when they are affected by the Holy Spirit with life. He's a giver of all life. That's why we say, when we pray, we don't know what to pray for. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 27. The Holy Ghost who searches the hearts of all men, that knows the mind of, mind of the Spirit, and will give you utterances. If you pray according to him, life come, result come, healing takes place. Because these are the words not of man, but words of the Holy Spirit. So even when you cast out demons, it's not your words, words of life. Demons go when the word has life. The seven sons of Sceva, in the book of Acts, chapter 19, from verse 13, they were casting out demons by imitating, by calling the name of Jesus who Paul preached. There was no conviction, there was no faith. What happened to him, to them? Dangerous mission. But when you are led by the Holy Spirit, inspiration come, expression come, and you speak it out, the power of God comes into the scene to fulfill that word. And life is manifested. So what you need, my brother, develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit by reading your Bible, meditating on it, and make the word a standard for your life. Because prophets say, I took time to develop the depth of my relationship with the Holy Spirit by reading my Bible daily, meditating on it. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. That's when the word become a part of you. So, if you take God's word to heart and truly made it a part of you, that word, by its very nature, will change you. You will find yourself moved by the very life of God. That's what the prophet just teaches. Let's take it. If you take God's word to heart by meditation, when the word enters your heart, it translates to spirit. It will, by its very nature, spirit, it becomes spirit. That's what he said. Then that word will change you. <laughs> mean, change you. You are no longer speaking. Holy Ghost speaking. You know the mind of God. You know the will of God on the matter. And you speak, it gives you utterances. Then you'll be moved by the very life of God. Holy Ghost will affect it. Mean your words can become one with the word of the Holy Ghost when they're affected by the Holy Spirit with life. That word in the midst of your heart gives you authority in heaven. Whatever you bind here, so bound in heaven. When you speak, man is not speaking. Holy Ghost was speaking. So please. Is the answer. He's the giver of all life. We need him to speak words of life. You can't wait to see the full lecture on that. The conversion room. Yes, we'll talk about it. <laughs> and yeah. you know what? Uh, if you see on your screen, you can see the logo of the University of God. And that's actually what it's all about. That's that your question about how the word can be living and active in us. If you actually see the logo, the revelation behind that logo is what you're talking about and what Racine has explained in that 2 Corinthians 3 verse 3. And you can, that's actually written on the logo. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. Absolutely. So in the, the question we answered previously, when the book of Mark chapter nine, the disciples said, out, 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 the demon refused to go. And when they came to Jesus said, deaf and dumb spirit, come out. And he went out immediately. What? Mm. Life was manifested. Mm. So when you speak word of life, fire will come. And when the fire come, no demon can resist it. That's the power of the spoken word affected by the Holy Spirit. Thank you.
So you can see that the feather writing is the, the, the Holy Spirit in our heart. When the Word of God is in our heart, that's when it's translated to spirit. And you can see that the sword of the Spirit there on the logo. Hallelujah.